So people were asking me, how did I make the ice? Well, I think the first thing I should show you is I took some high resolution photos of real ice. I, I froze water with blue acrylic paint in a pan and I put a sheet of white cardboard on the bottom so that the light would bounce back through the ice a little bit. I did a few different tests with this method. I uh, used a 24 megapixel camera to get a few of these shots. Uh, yeah, I looked at some alternate versions. This is after I pulled it out of the pan and I was trying to get like some closer details and then I cracked it because I was like, well, maybe I want to use some that's cracked. So I dropped it, cracked it. And then I, you know, started taking some high res photos of like cracked ice. And then I thought, well, what about the edge? Well, I had video footage of the edges of broke ice, but I accidentally erased the footage. Now, this was another attempt to partially freeze. You know, you sometimes see thin ice with water under it. I thought it'd be kind of cool to see that, but I never did get to that one yet. I made the mistake of putting rocks in the pan to weigh down the cardboard, which you can see the rocks through the ice, which isn't what I wanted. So I ended up not using that idea. But I do like that one, uh, just in comparison how the iPhone did with the same f photos. You know, it's just, I mean, it's all right. So that's basically what that is. So that's where the decal come in. So the decal got made for that ice. If I go into here, 2K decals. This was the decal. As you can see where it's, at the edge it is you know dissolved so that it'll blend into what is next to it decals don't need anything like that at the top or the bottom because you can adjust that setting in the game that blending gets done yeah load level I forgot it crashed on me a minute ago it did Let's go over here. There ain't nothing here. I'll put a decal down. And we're going to pick that ice patch. I think I have to change the texture length to 10. All right. Now, what you'll notice is that the edges aren't really blurred out like they should. I forgot to turn on the alpha clip. Normally I don't use alpha clip, but since this is also saved, I can, uh, as a transparency, I can adjust the amount of um, how much shows through from the bottom. But the part I was talking about, the edges here, you can adjust that here. You start fade and end. You tell it how many, you know, I guess that's meters. I don't know, five meters, five feet. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. But you can adjust this number. So if you want to have this gradually fade in, you know, or gradually fade out, you can. Um, and in some rare case, you may want to see a decal still appear after the default threshold which is cutting off here but you can increase that i believe it's like a thousand or a thousand and you choose just a render priority to make it click so now you can see it even farther away i wouldn't really see why you'd want to do that unless you know this was your map and you know you were you had a decal layout on the back of something back there, you know, and you wanted to still see it. But, all right, so that went over that. Now, let's talk about this semi-transparency here. The way I did this is when I loaded this into my photo editor, I exported it as a DDS format, and the uh, I used the compression type BC3 
for DDS. BC3 allows for transparencies. Now the reason why it's transparent is because I have a terrain paint that is also ice. And yes, I know that does not that is not the right normals for ice that looks like snow with ice color on it. But it's used for this. This is what its purpose was. To draw under here. So if I want this to behave uh, with the ground model of ice, I have to paint under it with ice. If I want to paint snow under it, it'll give it that look. If I paint asphalt under it, it'll give it that look. So I got other options, you know, that I can tweak the colors based on what's under it by the terrain paint. So you can make it look like it's kind of, you know, kind of got like some, you know, little snow here and there kind of on the top of it or you know, kind of like, uh, you know, maybe it ain't all ice, maybe some of it's snow, you know. And because each one of these have a different ground model under it, the car will behave differently on each, each whatever you're on. All right, now the reflection. The reflection came from the material. Uh, reflection is level and the lighting, uh, let's see, advanced. There's a reflectivity map. Basically, it's just the same map here. The amount of reflectivity which that's a dark sky up there. I forgot, I have a zone that I need to delete. There's a, a uh, I was experimenting with something. Let me delete this zone so we can see the proper reflection. Zones are good if you got a, a very intense level and you want to occlude the terrain so it's not drawn but only drawn where you're inside of it on the outside you know it's your full like seven million polys but if you're inside you know it drops it down to like 6.8 million because it got rid of the terrain in that spot i mean the, it occluded the terrain outside of the box but i can get into zones if somebody wants to know more about zones but for now i'm getting the zone off of here you also use zones to adjust the uh lighting like you can have a zone be nighttime and outside the zone be daytime. It's good for like caves and stuff. But now let's go back to this. We can now see our reflection properly on this ice, which this is 100% reflection. Let me adjust this. So I had it just showing some reflection. So it gives it like that sheen, that reflectivity. That's pretty much with the ice. Now there's another thing you can do to make it even more like ice. If you want to go even farther than this, you can put a thin river on the top. When I say thin, I mean it's very close to the surface. I mean, it's just barely, just, just barely on the ice, just a tick, just a small tick. Now, ice does not move, so you have to go in the water editor. You got to pick the water. And you gotta tell the ripple speed under zero, one, and two to be zero. If the water don't move. I mean, ice don't move. Unless it's falling off of something. And waves, we don't want any waves. So now we got, we got this stillness to it. 
Now it doesn't have much ripple effect. It doesn't really have any kind of distortion or anything. Um, you can adjust the ripple magnitude to give it, I don't know if you can see this. Let me get up close. As you adjust the ripple magnitude, you can see it distorting what's underneath it like a, uh, like how things look when you look through glass or ice or something. Um, let me uh, see. Now, what I usually... What I'll usually do is I'll adjust the um, uh, where's it at? distortion starting in. So this tells it uh, the depth of the distortion. How deep the how how deep the distortion goes? If it's not very deep, it's going to be like. You see what I mean? I don't know how to explain what I'm damn thinking. Sometimes it takes me a, a little bit to get it quite like I want it. I don't like how the reflections. I don't like the way those look. I don't like the way the update is. I don't want to make it update faster. Then it takes more resources. You can make the thing look better at least. Increase the resolution a little. I wish I wrote down the settings I had on the other level. I had some really, really good, uh, I mean, you may think that's fine. I don't know. I don't think it looks that good yet. Now I'm fooling with the foam to give it just a little more. extra little feature here and there. I can always move this up a bit too.
the fog is what uh, reflects like the stuff around and it is the regular reflection that just does the uh, Well, I thought it was a regular reflection that does the sky. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're starting to... That's coming along nicely. Uh, you got different effects you can do, of course. Depends on what you want. That's how that's done. You're not gonna get a terrain paint to look like. Well, you might could get a terrain paint to look like that with PBR, but don't use that much. I don't know about y'all, but that PBR stuff makes my system run slower. drive on this. Delete that. Some mods out of there. Now, what do you see? Well, you see we're in the water. Well, you don't want to see the water if you're on ice. And this is what I was talking about. You want to get the uh, lake or river, whatever you're putting it on, whatever you're putting on it. You want to get it close to the ice, but not in the ice, not too far above the ice.
now to get rid of the water I go into here uh, hidden but if it's hidden well if it's hidden you don't get the extra benefit of the refraction and all that. So the only way you can get rid of that is to uh, go up here to uh, density zero, I believe it is. Where would my damn car go? I just reset it. All right, so now, those are supposed to be ice flakes, by the way. I didn't really get that looking very good. But now, we don't have the water splashes. And we still get to keep the reflective properties with the distortion under the ice. Let me just slow this down. You can't really see what it's doing unless you're moving slow enough and you can see the different layers and how like the distortion affects I think that works. What do y'all think? Now the other decal I made, I mean, I made a lot of decals. A lot of them. And they all are using the half opacity. So if I want to I don't think this is the one that I liked. I made a few of these. But they all use that same uh, translucent blend so I can terrain paint under it different things to get different colors or different particle effects. Now the particle effects is something entirely different. There is my ice mud decal there. It's supposed to be like tire tracks for like going over snow, which there's only one set of things like you would duplicate it. I found too much, um, it's too much trouble to try to get these things to be the right distance away for like whatever car you're riding on the map with so you you can customize uh, the decal 
so that, uh, you know, it's just one tire or one side of the car. Wow. And this also is a half transparency, so you can see if it's going over snow, it's got one particular texture. If it's going over ice, then it looks like how when you stomp your foot on the ice and break, kind of like break a layer, your foot kind of goes through it a little bit, you know, and it makes that white cracking around it. That was what the idea of this was it's supposed to be. But if it's in the snow, then it just looks like, you know, little shadows or whatnot. And let's see the other decal. I have another, let's see. I think the other one is uh, actually the mud decal decal. See now this is like for if you're going over like uh, snow and there's mud under it or dirt under the snow. You know maybe it's a thin layer of snow. You drove over it and you made some tire tracks. Uh, you can make the tire tracks more narrow. Select an all. 0.5. Nope. One. One. Uh, the one. There we go. So, like I said before, you can just duplicate this have it you know the other one beside it and you can have it match whatever your car uh yes now, i'm not sure how this will look if it goes over ice but that's probably about how i think it would look if you drove through mud and you had it on your tire and you drove over the top of ice and it probably would look like that so that's what i think Anyway, let's see what else, what else, let's go make another decal. Like I said, I made several of these. I don't remember them all off the top of my head. Mud ice decal, oh that's the same one. road crack road all right so this is another one this was an early attempt like the first attempt which is also using half transparency when i say half transparency i mean like the alpha if i had the texture in here uh, the alpha is like somewhere around 217 so like with the eyes i can paint under it and say okay i want this to be asphalt i want this to be where it snowed a little bit <laughs> and then maybe up here now this is what the ice particle textures for maybe up here it's a little frozen water you know maybe that uh little patch of ice is preceded by a little i mean that patch of snow is preceded by a little bit of ice you know and then before that it's just a little bit of asphalt and these decals will work just like they do on the other stuff on here just as well then on what you want to do now let's change this decal to uh, a different decal Crack road, this is crack road two. This is another type of road. I uh, make this wider. So, and just like the others, you got, uh, this, is actually a, this is actually a road texture from Grand Theft Auto 5 that I captured. But as you can see, this just like the other, half transparency so that allows you to paint under it extra you know layers depending on what you want to want to do all right let's go to the next one we got decal road 2k now this is the one that did not use the transparency and this is when i first realized well 
that's not going to work because you can't like paint snow and stuff on that unless it's half transparent. So that's when I realized about that and started doing that. That was the very first texture I tried to make. I didn't like that one at all. That was the first attempt to make a ice texture and I didn't care for that one. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see what was the other. I think maybe one more. Oh, I don't remember what I did. Let's go over here. Let's close this. Let's go where there ain't nothing. Like, say you want to make a lake, like a ice lake. Make this like a hundred wide. Make it an ice patch, and then we gotta adjust the length to match that long texture. I mean, the length's got to be proportionate to the width. Is what I'm saying. You don't want it to be compressed. Now, I have noticed like these really big decals are a pain in the, the rear to uh, get to do correctly. Sometimes you got to adjust the render priority. Uh, but a lot of times, I'm not really sure why. It does this on like really big, big ones. I don't know if it's running out of memory, but I did notice when I tried to make like a 100 wide, like a really wide decal, it started acting funny, like after a short distance. I really wasn't sure. Maybe, well, maybe it's, uh, it could be this, I don't know. Like I said, I ain't really figured that one out. Maybe it's a glitch in the engine. But you see, it just stubbornly does not want to draw more than a little bit of distance. That's something I hadn't figured out. Unless the terrain's messed up here for some reason. Yeah. See how it just screws all up. It just screws all up. It doesn't want to do right when you make a very large... Oh, wait a minute. That's extending that other decal out. Uh, let's see. And it's not just that one particular one. It's all of them. They act stupid like this. So, I don't know why I do that with a very wide decal. So, I now know that I was wasting my time when I first tried to fix that. I can't really think of nothing else. I mean, I didn't already explain. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. 